With the recent release of the Cypunk Anthology book that includes Altered State, Bearcats, and Xeno Dead Zone, I wanted to go through and show you how to make a character in each of the settings, starting with Altered State. Now, Altered State is the ICRPG Cyberpunk supplement released by Runehammer and Alex Alvarez, and together they highlighted a dystopian cyberpunk setting that's very unique, um, and the tone of the game is more that all the characters are runners, which are heroes, rather than just working down on the streets for profit. Um, so you're going up against huge evil forces, mega corporations trying to save the world, um, and form uh, freeform AIs and things like that, uh, rather than just doing a job every week. Um, it includes different rules than your classic ICRPG, different effort dice, um, rolling ultimate has some extra rules, rage dice, surge dice, you know, things for aiming, things for dying, stuff like that. So it kind of changes up ICRPG to highlight the flavor of cyberpunk. Additionally, the character creation process is different and unique. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through nine steps um, over the next couple pages. Um, starting with consciousness and moving down all the way through bonds and links, and so we'll sh you'll, you'll be able to kind of see how much how different it is um, building a character in altered state versus ICRPG. And so the first thing that you have is you have your character sheets, and so you've got your basic information up here at the top. You've got your stats as normal. Um, you've got your effort die here, your weapons listed out. You've got surge capsules, which everybody starts out with four every session. Um, then you've got rage dice, which you can um, build up over the course of a session. You've got your gear down here. You've got your mu munitions, um, your psionics abilities, then your bonds and links. So it's kind of a, a different layout. Familiar, but but different. So then step number one is choosing your consciousness, which is essentially like your brain. And so you can roll or choose. And so you have things like organic, enhanced AI, all the way up to awakened. Um, and each one of these gives a plus one, uh, a plus one, or at least a plus two bonus in some stat. So for example, if I decide to go with enhanced, my organic brain is enhanced with digital bioware, I give myself so I say it's enhanced, and I give myself um, plus one dex and plus one wisdom. So I'll go plus one dex, and I'll give myself plus one wisdom. Then after I chose my consciousness, I choose my skin. Um, in altered state, uh, when you you essentially have your stack, which is kind of your your main kind of consciousness and if you die um, your other players can retrieve your stack and insert it into another body and so you have your different skins so it's like a human body a synth synthetic body a construct or even a mutant um, and each one of these gives a different kind of allotment of stat points that you can have so for example human can you can add eight to your stats versus um, a construct which you only add four points to your stats. And so, for example, I'm going to go with a construct. And what it does is I get four points to my stats. So between all of my stats and all of my efforts, I have four points to a lot. So I'll just write a little four right there. But I get to add plus one to my armor to start out with, and I get an extra heart. So I'm going to start out with two hearts rather than one. And again, just like ICRPG, each heart is worth 10 hit points. Um, so I'm a little tougher uh, than the rest of the players. Then you get to choose your type. Um, and Alter State really dives deeper into the tag philosophy, where you get a little tag and a little mechanical bonus to it. So you've got your different types like Slicer, Decker, Exo, Psychic, um, Operative, and Shifter. Um, so for my enhanced construct, so I have an enhanced brain, I'm essentially a robot um, or an android of some kind. So for me, I think I think this the shifter looks pretty 
pretty cool. Um, and so I can just say that I'm a shifter. And then I get to choose one of the tags. So each each uh, type comes with two tags and it gives you a bonus. So for example, the shifter, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Roll easy with charisma to impersonate or become another person. Or shadow walk anytime you roll for stealth, roll easy. So I'm thinking to myself, my, my construct, I feel like stealth is the way to go. And so I'm gonna write just shadow walk as my tag. And then that means stealth equals easy. Okay. Um, then up here next, you have your enhancements. So every character gets to roll or choose two enhancements. And so you got things that you're enhancing your body with. I mean, we're talking cyberpunk. So you go, um, you go and you get a metal arm. You get a cybernetic eye. You get um, your reflexes augmented, things like that. So you got everything like the cyber cyber optics, which gives you a bonus to some stat and some kind of ability. So I think for me, cyber optics sounds pretty cool. So I'll do I'll write that up. Optics. I'll include the plus one wisdom that I get, and it says movement detection. I get a five times zoom, and I get uh, to trace chemical residue to the course of the game. So I have a, a little bonus, something to make my character shine in that way because I've augmented my body with that. Um, then poly resin skeleton. Uh, that sounds pretty good. So my other enhancement is a poly resin skeleton, which gives me another plus one armor and I get to start with five additional um, hit points. So because I'm a construct and because I have a poly resin skeleton, um, I'm going to end up starting with two and a half uh, hearts or 25 hit points. Um, so I am one tough cookie. Now the the thing that you want to you can do as well is that if you don't want to necessarily enhance your body and make them kind of like permanent attachments. To your character's, you know, being, you can also just substitute any one of these enhancements with gear, and you can just say it's not actually a part of me; it's gear, so it's not permanently attached, um, but it could be lost. So, kind of gives a, a little bit more flexibility. Um, then next up is equipment. Come here. Um, it's just got some basic equipment here. You can roll or choose two of them. And so let's go with, um, for my stealthy robot, I think some tools sounds pretty good. So I think he's going to go with tools and he's going to go with auto lock picks. Picks, which gives him plus three when lock picking and then let's go with a tactical data unit uh, data unit which gives him a plus two weapon effort um, and I get to choose melee or range so I think he's gonna go with uh, he's gonna go with ranged I'm getting my getting a sense that my character is kind of like a sneaky sniper, sneaks into places, takes a shot, and then sneaks out. So weapon ranged plus two. Okay. Um, so it, weapon effort specifically, you know, specifically gun. So plus two to gun, and then you actually get to choose weapons. Um, so there's kind of two different pages of weapons and you get to choose two weapons to go with it. So I'm feeling that sneaky sniper. So we're going to go through um, the PMG heavy. So PMG heavy sniper. And uh, another part of altered state that does really well is they keep their, the all every, it's like 
an exercise in brevity. So everything is just little snippets of, of, of information. So for example, long range auto, semi-automatic sniper shoots through walls, ultimate effort, six capacity. So sniper deals ultimate. Ultimate and it's got its capacity of six. Okay, and then I think for him, if he's sneaking into places, I think he also has some kind of uh, extra weapon, and he's going to go with the Shikomizu broadsword, which is let's see, let's make sure you can see that. She can use a broadsword, never breaks, can be used as a pry board, does two times damage to all non-mechanized -me foes, um, has a unique tendency to turn up even when lost. She can use a broadsword. So we're going to be just doing two times damage, and we'll be able to remember kind of the extra bits. Then, so we've got our weapons, but we also have munitions. So this is special ammo, um, and so you get to choose one ammo and one explosive type to just carry with you. And so you got things like venom, splinter, heat, EMP, things like that. And so this is stuff that you can decide on your turn, okay, I'm gonna use this type of ammo versus just the regular basic ammo. And it kind of lets you give a, a little bit of extra punch to your guns. And so I'm gonna go with, um, armor piercing and so right here all I got to do is um, just kind of mark off that I've got 10 armor piercing rounds and you can't really see it in the camera but each one of these on this character sheet kind of lists out the munitions the weapon type and it gives you the basic rules um, to give that refreshing memory so like extra D and damage um, ignore armor effects so you can do that so then I can just every time I take a shot with armor piercing round I can just Mark it down and keep track of it on the on the edge or on a different piece of paper, and then for explosives, I get to you know house, uh, hallucinogen, smoke grenades, micro breaching. Um, I'm gonna go with spider mines. So crawl to target any surface and then do explode for two times ultimate. Okay. Um, so then the next thing you have is you, if you chose the psychic character type, you can also choose for psionics, which are essentially kind of like the psychic powers um, and allows you to start building up rage dice as well um, to use in those, uh, in those instances. So you got things like crush, lash, EM pulse, fly, flay, you know, astral flight, nightmare. So kind of these psychic psionic abilities. Um, you can just treat them like tags. They get uh, just a little word and then a little mechanical uh, bonus uh, that you can then work through and use in the game. But since I'm a enhanced construct, I'm kind of the stealthy guy, I'm not a psychic, so I'm not going to take any psionic abilities. Then you've got links and bonds as the final step. So every character starts out with a link and every character starts out with a bond. And so it gives you some suggestions for some common links and common bonds that you can choose from, or you can also create your own. Um, so you've got things in the world. So for example, a common link is um, uh, Achilles Sandoval, a rogue AI, dwells in the hold of an abandoned freighter where it runs an illegal death game. Okay, maybe he has a common link there. Maybe. Um, there or Dara Trem, ghost. She was the best operative unt ever until she disappeared. So, <clears throat> I think for my stealthy sniper guy, um, he probably has some connection with Achilles Sandoval. For whatever reason, he he's he's had a run in with the death game and with this rogue AI. Um, Oh, so sorry, I put this over here on bond. It should be on link. And each link allows you to call in one key favor per session. So for whatever reason, if I can think of a reason why I could go to him for, for a favor, I could go to Achilles Sandoval 
for um, for a favor. Then bonds, sorry, on this side, um, this is kind of something like a relationship that you have. So like your mother, your father, your brother, your best friend, your coworker, cousin, child, you know, anything like that. And then you have some kind of bond with them for that. So for example, if I chose, you know, my, my brother, and then I can have like things like, okay, cult napped your bond is part of a secret cult against his or her will or maybe not okay or the rap sheet your bond has a rap sheet a mile long it may or may not be true um, so for example my brother has a rap sheet and I owe them big time so maybe maybe they have a rap sheet that's partially you know my fault maybe I'm I'm to blame for it but he's taken the rap for me and so he's in prison or whatever or he's you know doing whatever covering for me so I can go do my thing or or whatever so it gives you that that bond and it gives you um, something to connect with them and that that gives your GM some uh, some wiggle room and some uh, food for thought to include in the games and after you've done all that, um, you can, sorry, do Shikamuzu, what? Shikamizu, um, blood, uh, broadsword, and I chose the PMG sniper, so I can do that too. Um, and so from here, I've gotten my character, and now I can think about my stats. So, like I said, because I chose the uh, construct, I get four points to a lot between all of these and you can see that it kind of weighs it out because I got a construct I got extra hearts and I got extra armor so it kind of balances out okay I don't really need all um, all those stat points and so for example I've also got my dex which came from my enhanced my wisdom came from my enhanced and I got my effort, weapon effort which came from my uh, tactical data so through the course of creating your character, you almost, and rather than having a set number, it, you kind of build up your options. And so I've got, I know I've got two whiz. Um, so so I've I got one whiz, and I've got two armor. And so I'm going to go with my intelligence. My, I have a plus one strength. I'm going to go with a plus one intelligence and I'm gonna go with because I have that dex I'm gonna add a pl another plus one so I have plus one so that ends up getting a, being plus two for dex plus one I'm gonna leave with that basic whiz and then I'm going to give myself um, a plus one in ultimate so I've got the plus two so I've got plus two on range Plus one, and then uh, con, not con, uh, just 10 plus your armor. So I've got a total of 12 armor. So from there, you got plus one strength, plus two dex, plus one intelligence, plus one wisdom, uh, an armor of 12, a plus two on our gun effort when we're using ranged weapons, and a plus one ultimate um, there. And then we've got two and a half hearts or 25 hit points, four surge dice to use, um, and then you end up with rage dice if you're using psionic abilities, you've got a dying timer of six, um, and then you've still got hero coins. And that's essentially it. Um, last thing to come up with is the name, and um, I think I'm gonna go with, let's go with, Jean, but it's spelled like Jean, so Jean, um, go a little French there. So yeah, so I think overall my, my character Jean is this construct, he's a stealthy, stealthy construct, he, he, he's hired out to get into situations, sneak into tall buildings, take out targets, um, break into mega corporations, steal data, and with his construct he's 
he's kind of a bit of bit of a tank, so he can just kind of walk in, take a couple shots, deal with what he needs to um, as he goes through, and and then get out.